where yeah, we've got the access lane for all of the fields we own on this side of the road. Um, so it just makes more sense. That's the direction the harvester is going to be coming from. It's the direction that most of our field care implements are going to be coming from. And it's very rare that we're going to say, oh, I need to go straight from this field to the store or straight from the store to this field. But in this one instant, I am going to have to go straight from this field to the store, so we're going to have to take the long way around. Alrighty, and that is all the field painting we need to do. Yay. I guess the thing I don't, I, mean, I, I wish would happen with this plow is that the wheel would rotate with the plow and um, actually provide a little bit of support when you're driving it in travel mode. I believe the smaller plow has a rotating wheel, this one has a rocking wheel. So the wheel basically has a pivot there which allows it to support the plow when you're plowing a furrow. But it has no support when you're travelling. Which is a shame. Okay, we should be able to not just enough room to fit through there, I might. Well, that might get awkward when we have to do a silage uh, cut on our field. But I don't know if we have to do a silage cut before we are cutting the barley. If we get to cut the barley soon, next month for example, We'll be whole cropping that as well, plus the whole crop wheat will be complete, fermented, so I can always cut that open and stick that in the feeding robot and it will give me room there for the barley um, silage. Oh, yes. I'm looking at this and thinking, am I going the right way? I don't remember a left turn, but um, I haven't even got out of the road and the street our uh, farm is on. Anyway, there we go. Now I'm in familiar grounds. So yeah, that's why at the start of today's episode, we're about 10,000 pounds less in the bank than there had been and that was because I did a little bit of terrain editing at that um, corner of that field and just took that house out. I don't need that house anymore, it came with the, the our original yard but it's not a sleep trigger. So I had to put in a, um, what's it, a doormat sleep trigger which is okay but frankly why do I want to do that okay now comes the fun bit how big of a lime spreader do I want <sighs> I usually go for the smaller one but with the maximum capacity that we can good grief well we certainly screwed that up there's a lot of damage to the uh, the paint. I'm just going to return that because we get no benefit from painting somebody else's piece of equipment. So spreaders, eeny meeny miny mo. Oh yeah, That's, there's a spader as well as the bio baler. So again, I don't usually use those, and they have a horrendous operating speed, eight kilometers. When you look at a plow. Um, 12 kilometers so 50% faster with the plow um, I'm not sure they're particularly um, two and a half meters 
and 190 horsepower. They're high horsepower. They've got a reasonable working width. I don't know if you can create fields with them. But then again, I have create fields with a cultivator mod on. So, yeah, it's, it's a different thing. Okay, spreaders. So this one and this one, you can't do lime. This one, you can do lime. But it's only got 3,900 litres as the realistic model. And so you're going to empty that in like 10 seconds, especially on a new field. Um, I usually go for this one and take it up to 14,000. I used to avoid this one because it only has... I, I used to use this one exclusively for lime. So this was a lime spreader. And if I needed another spreader, I'd usually go for possibly one of these for fertilizer because they come with narrow wheels. This one was never available with narrow wheels up until Farm Sim 22. Now you can get narrow tires on it. It's not going to damage the crops if you have to go and fertilize. Um, but that one's half the price, so it's going to be half the leasing. So that's what we're going to go with. Extension full. Uh, we'll set up fine. Spreading disc 6 meter unit. I will take the license plate off the back and we will lease that because I can't buy it. Good. I can't accidentally buy it. We will then go to big bags and we want seven of these. Buy. Yes, indeed. Okay. Okay, let's... Uh, See if I can find my tractor. Where'd my tractor go? There. Engine's still running, so that's good. Now the problem with this is... Oh, no, no problem. Okay. I was going to say the problem with this is that the... Uh, I'll have to connect to the spreader in order to open the box on the top, but actually don't, so... And I bought the two. Oh, snow sweeping dude just went by. Um, I bought the two prong lifter specifically for this um, oh, does that not work? Okay. I guess you have to come from the right side. Most of the time, okay, so, sorry, uh, to complete my thought, most of the time when I come down to the store, I will be coming down in this tractor, which has quite a good lift capability. So, it just makes sense to come down here with the front loader on it. And we keep the, uh, the bag lifter locally. And we can unload it Whoa, very, very quickly. And we can do it a little bit more realistically than pulling up alongside a bag and pressing a button and it magically beams itself into the back of the, the implement. tell it's a little bit of a strain on the front there. The way the tractor does buck a little bit. I'd probably do better if I had wheel weights, but you can't put wheel weights on narrow tyres. I don't think the Massey would work with this particular bag lifter. I could only lift one bag at a time with it. Plus the Massey's slow. Uh, and uh, less horsepower, so maybe not as good at lifting stuff. 
or not. Take longer to drive down here on the Massey. So this is turning out to be quite a versatile little tractor for us. It's only 250 horse, but it does, gets the job done. Ah. There's all sorts of weirdness going on there. I mean, at least with the last bag, I'll be able to pull up alongside. Okay. Oh, there we go. No, it's... Oh, yeah. <coughs> Grab that there. And then I think coming in from the side here will... Oops, if I left it high enough. Oh, I'm lifting it too high. That's the problem. I'm lifting it outside the load detection point. Well, good to know. And we're going to have to reverse out of there really sharpish when it gets empty. Because that lid is going to come down. But just having this bag lifter here is cheaper than having to buy a front loader and all the tools to go with it. That said, we do have the electric front loader up at the dairy. which if we find another tele truck or something like that comes in up I could pull that out of we didn't want to do that but uh, try all that attachment thing again yeah sorry if um, if we get a tele truck or something like that comes up in the store sale again. We've already had two. Um, I could consider relocating that electric front loader back to the store. And again, I'm not sure it's going to be able to cope with a double uh, a double bag lifter. So I don't think it's very heavy. But that will be more of a time when uh, this tractor has gone beyond its useful life and um, we replace it with something that is sort of a mid-sized field work and haulage tractor and, uh, and maybe not have front loader arms on it. And I'm not going to take the Massey Ferguson down to the store to use, but... I mean, it kind of makes sense to have something in the 280 horsepower range we can go and collect stuff from the store with that has a good speed. So, JCB maybe. Dude, what are you doing? Um, and, yeah, we, we can go shopping with the John Deere. We could go shopping with anything over 250 horsepower with a good speed and just have something else at the store with the front loader arms to uh, load stuff up. Ooh, he's struggling up this hill. That's a thing. Okay, let's uh, check. We're on auto application. We are. So general um, line application on these two fields should be fairly light usage on the existing field and then very heavy usage on the newly created field. But we will be able to see that relative level when we get here and start unfolding everything. 
So yeah. Oh, the, oh crud. Okay. I forgot that. Mm. This dude, I'm going to need to reapply um, for soil information. Yes. Now the good thing about applying for the soil information is this field's getting, I think, long in the tooth. So that will refresh the these fields um, soil information. So they're all on the same. Uh, duh, 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 what's the word for it? They're all on the same cycle, uh, whatever the cycle is. Okay, um, gonna wait until the geologist reports back. I don't know how long he's gonna take, but uh, we'll do some lime spreading at the bottom of the field. And you can see that's quite a step up from yellow to green on the map. Um, but actual lime usage is fairly slow. It's not super slow. You can still see it chomping through. But we started off with 14,000 and we're, we're barely down a level yet. Ew. I wonder if... I think I need to turn that off for a second and go back to here. I don't think he's going to... Oh. That's a problem, isn't it? Environmental. Uh, precision farming, or is it there? No. Precision farming. No soil to analyze. So I click on that, I can purchase soil information, but that's only that area of ground. And if I click there, I can't purchase that. Damn. Okay. Um, change of plans, everybody. Uh, I need this tractor. You can own... Okay. This is going to be another test. Yay. We're going to have to pick ourselves up a uh, soil analysis tool. Because it turns out you can't analyse the soil of a not field. I wonder how that affects the environmental score too. So, uh, yeah, we've got, we've got bits of our farm that aren't part of an established field and the geologist won't go and do the thing on it. Ooh. Now, ordinarily, um, I mean, you look at Dagawin is a very uh, keen uh, on expanding his fields to the maximum size they can be. And when he does that, he's expanding the field, but um, he's not going beyond the boundaries of that field area. Um, so he's always, you know, it's, it's okay, the field to our left, the grass bit between the hedge and the crop is still part of that land. So if you did soil analysis and you had ploughed that portion of ground, it would be included in the soil analysis because it's part of the owned field. Um, but if you, it looks like if you buy a yard that just has buildings on and no arable ground, um, the game excludes that from soil analysis. Might be if I save the game and reload it, 
that those parts of the ground will become considered to be analyzable uh, plots of ground because they have plowed land in them but I think I'm not going to end the game and come back in so what I'm looking at now is we'll try and do a manual analysis and see if that works and then after that we'll just um, uh, after that next gaming session whether it's on camera or off camera I'll try and see if I can hire a um, an analysis dude, a geologist, to come in and do um, the analysis on that ground and just pay for it. What the heck's that? A mobile bill can... grain can be grinded and corn can be milled to CCM. That's cool. Might need one of those. Uh, that's a... Oh, that's a grain. Well things. Okay, I need that. I'm just going to lease it because we don't, we need it for about three or four soil samples. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how few we need. problem is is if I want to do this ground you know if I want to improve the yield on this ground I need to have the analysis done if it doesn't work as I said I might have to exit and reload and see if it's because I created the field outside the bounds of land that had field on it already Because on the field, I, on the field I've just started liming. That was a tree area, not particularly useful. It was a little bit restrictive as a tree area because you had to drive through the crop to get to the trees. So the only time you can har um, harvest the trees in that plot is if um, during winter when there's no crop in the ground. Now this plot on the right, where there's a bunch of trees, you can get into that with anything you like and uh, not have to drive through arable fields of crops to get there. Anyway, I suppose, okay, oh shoot. Okay, that soil analysis cost us 22,000. Just under 21,000. That was an expensive lesson. However, um, as I said, it does bring both of those fields as, yeah, most recent soil analysis performed. So if we can get these end bits done, then I don't have to worry about part of the field bill. You know, I have to analyze part of the field and then the rest of it later. Anyway, we're nearly back. And of course, again, I have to go the long way around to get into field 50. So, how does this thing work? Uh, take sample 4, unfold 5, okay. The usual buttons. Take it up to round about there. Okay, that has taken us up. Okay, so that's a good thing. We haven't wasted money 
getting hold of the sampler. But uh, actually, that's quite a good sample area. Going to need about four here by the looks of it. Oops. Just to cover the entire area. But yeah, so either off stream or early next week, um, <coughs> I'll try and do a uh, geologist check on this area to see if it now views this plot of land as being something a geologist can analyse. Right now, that's four. As soon as this is done, we'll just return it and be happy. Run, 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 run! Beat the car. I also noticed there's a bunch of new textures. Um, I believe. animal mud. Kind of looks like this surface. Um, there's also gravel which is different. There's also some down the end here. Gravel. 